Hello, Edible Animals here. Today I'm going to give you a complete overview on the Glaive from beginner to advanced. Oh yeah, and for anyone who doesn't want to play the Glaive, this guide will also discuss how to counter the weapon. Let's start with an overview of this weapon. The Glaive is a polearm weapon that is oppressive at far, but st very lacking at close range. The weapon consists of a slashing blade mounted on a shaft. Just like other polearm weapons, you can parry between the hands. Generally, slashes will do more damage than stabbing. The weapon also features damage scaling. Since a glaive requires a very long swing distance to maximize damage, the closer you are to the opponent, the less damage you will generally do. It also tends to be uncommon, but can be very strong when placed into the right hands. Finally, for new players just learning the game, you can move your hands up and down the glaive by using your trigger button. Clicking a trigger button will lock a hand on the glaive while holding both trigger buttons will lock both hands on the shaft. Alright, let's go over some pros and cons with this weapon. As you will see in a moment, this weapon has some very good pros, but also some very large weaknesses. Let's start with the pros. First off, the glaive moves very fast, making it very difficult to react to. Along with this, it also has some of the longest range in the game, save for maybe crossbow. This makes it an absolute nightmare to fight at a distance. The damage at a distance also isn't that bad, at around 60 damage per headshot. One of the best features of this weapon is its shaft. The shaft allows it to block at all times, even when the blade has been broken. Finally, the fact that the weapon is relatively rare helps glaive players because many people will not know how to fight against this weapon effectively. Alright, let's get to the cons. Although the glaive has some very good strengths, it also has some very notable flaws. First, the glaive makes the player have a very slow movement speed, making it more difficult to escape a face hug. Second, the glaive has very low damage at close range where you cannot swing as wide. Expect most of your attacks at close range to hit for less than 40 damage. Finally, switching from far to close range takes time. During this time, the Glaive player is very vulnerable to attack. Before I get into the guide itself, I want to discuss some terms that I will use so that everyone is on the same page. The neutral is simply put the beginning of the match or any time when both players are out of each other's reach. Each player must look for an opening to attack or counterattack. A 33-33-33 situation is a situation where there are three choices your opponent can make. One of these choices will help protect them from your attack. These situations force you and your opponent to predict each other's movements and attacks. To condition an opponent basically means to make an opponent choose a bad decision. For example, you could condition someone to choose a certain option in a 33-33-33 and punish accordingly. In this section of the video, I will discuss how to effectively play neutral as a glaive player. This is where the glaive really shines. The opponent has to work much more to win neutral because they have to go through your most effective range. When at a range, the glaive player will want to poke at the opponent and get a response from them. Poking at the opponent may net you some damage and allow you to condition the opponent. It's basically important to be more aggressive at a range because you can hit your opponent, but they cannot hit you back. Do be wary not to break your blade though. A broken blade can allow the opponent to close the distance. Conditioning your opponent is a large part of playing the glaive. The glaive has a sort of 33-33-33 situation at a range. Since the weapon is so fast, it is very difficult to react to. This makes it so that the glaive player can strike at either side of the opponent and the head without the opponent easily being able to react to it. As a glaive player, you want to condition your opponent to block the legs. You can do this by feigning attacks at their legs and also landing attacks on their legs. This allows you to get the sweet 60 damage headshot with the glaive, which will win you most fights. In the next clip, you will see me striking the feet of someone who is scared of getting headshot by the glaive. In the following clip, you'll see me headshot the opponent who has been conditioned to block their feet. Sometimes, you'll need to condition your opponent over multiple fights.
let's talk about stuffing out approaches. Many players will use short bursts of movement in order to get in your face. If you can call this out, you can often land a headshot. Generally, players will do this if they become desperate to get in. The ability to punish these unsafe approaches will allow you to win many more fights. In this next clip, you will see my opponent approach me without trading blades or getting a block. I am able to call it out and punish my opponent accordingly. One of the most common questions that Glaive players ask me is how to fight up close. Fighting up close is inevitable, as you cannot keep your opponent out at all times. Interestingly, I also find that stronger Glaive players are often determined by their ability to fight in close quarters. Unfortunately, Glaive will almost always be disadvantaged at close range, but there are still some tricks that Glaive players use when their opponents get too close for comfort. Alright, let's get to it. As mentioned before, the Glaive's damage drastically decreases the closer that you are to the opponent. This makes it especially important to land headshots up close. A lot of the time, you want to use stabs when you are up close instead of slashes. This is because slashes generally have more consistent damage and do a decent 25 damage to the head. As a glaive player, you want to create sort of a wall between you and your opponent. Make sure to face the opponent with outstretched arms and try to block between your hands. Getting a parry is a very good way to land a counterattack on the opponent, but much of the time it is better to attack once your blade has been regenerated instead. Generally, you want to block only after your blade has been broken unless you are fishing for a parry. Up close, you also want to actively look for opportunities to break your opponent's blade and get the upper hand in regeneration. Getting the opponent off you is probably the most difficult part about playing the glaive. However, there are a few tricks to this. As you strike your opponent, you can try to sidestep their attack. Many players will be caught off guard and with their attack if you do this. In this next clip, you'll see me sidestep my opponent's attack and counterattack him. Sprinting out of the close encounter is another option if you see the opponent leaving an opening in their face hug. You will see me sprint away in the next clip. Finally, if you have decent ping, you can regen lock by hitting them as soon as both of your blades regen in order to force your opponent to disengage you. Blade staggering is a strategy that has been around since the release of the game. The basic idea is that you break your own blade on the ground and break the opponent's blade with your shaft. Although it sounds good on paper, I don't recommend doing it super often. Breaking your blade on the ground will allow your opponent to have the first attack. In addition to this, it can simply be beaten with Harden. It does have some notable uses, however, against shield and pole arms to an extent. It is particularly useful when you are confident against your opponent and want to have a cleaner fight. In this section, I'll be talking about some matchup specifics you should know as a Glaive player. First off, let's talk about fighting the dagger. In neutral, fighting the dagger relies on predicting burst movements and responding appropriately. I personally like to choke up halfway when fighting the dagger so that I can fight up close better. Since a dagger has a pathetic harden and cannot parry, most dagger players will rely more on burst movement rather than blocking in order to get in. Calling out these movements allow glaive players to win this matchup. While playing close, you want to take advantage of the dagger's slower regen on hit and force the dagger player off of you. Finally, you want to make a lot of use off of sidestep striking and punish the dagger player for whiffing attacks. In polearm versus polearm fights, you can often mess with the opponent's range by moving backwards and forwards, forcing them to switch grips. This is especially good if the opponent is not super fast at switching grips or fighting at close or far range. Against a spear specifically, you want to fight further away because you outdamage a spear at far range. You should also be careful of spear players overheading you at close range. Try to predict this and block high. Against Maul Blade, Katana, Greatsword, and Dual Wielding, you want to keep distance at all costs. These weapons usually have a more difficult time approaching, but are extremely scary when they do get in your face. Always look to punish the approaches against these weapons, as they usually will have slower movement speeds. Against Dual Weapons specifically, you can take advantage of the slower regen on hit. 
This means that when the opponent hits you first, your blade will be done regenerating first, similar to what happens against Dagger. Before I tell you how to counter Glaive, if you just came here to learn how to counter Glaive, I also recommend watching the rest of the video. Part of countering this weapon is knowing how a Glaive player thinks and knowing what tricks Glaive has. Beating this weapon requires three main steps that exploit Glaive's glaring weaknesses. First, close the distance with a Glaive player and win neutral. This can be done in a few ways. One way is to trade blades or block a Glaive attack. This allows you to safely approach a Glaive player without being hit. Another way you can approach is by using smart bursts of speed. Glaive players must adjust their hands in order to fight you at close range. This allows you to jump right on the Glaive player and fight him or her in his or her weakest range. Be careful though, a Glaive player that expects this will punish you with a 60 damage headshot, which could probably lose you the game. One very good trick here is to crouch down slightly while at a distance to lower your hitboxes and make yourself much more difficult to hit. Second, you want to punish the Glaive player for allowing you to get into close range. Glaive players tend to block by spreading their arms out in front of them, creating a sort of wall between them and the opponent. You want to do things like reach over the Glaive player's head and mix up exactly where you want to attack. Additionally, if you play a weapon like Katana, you can use a sheath to prevent the Glaive player from regenerating their blade. Lastly, do not allow your opponent to reset neutral. Stick to the Glaive player and punish them for their mistake. Glaive players will sometimes try to fight back, walk backwards, and duck and weave around you. You always want to be facing a Glaive player and have your collision box block his or her way to prevent any sort of escape. A mistake with blocking the Glaive player with your collision box can let him or her run past you easily. In this section of the video, I want to break down what some players did incorrectly and correctly when fighting Glaive by analyzing some matches. Alright, so this is the first match. It is against Sith, a great sword player. So, to start off the game, my opponent tries to block my attack, and I punish it by hitting his legs. The issue was, he didn't cover his legs completely. Right here, I'm just thinking about conditioning my opponent so that I can hit him on the head later. So, as his blade breaks, he now tries to approach me. However, he's a little bit far away, and I punish his unsafe approach. Now, he goes for an attack, but he misses, and that is a big punish for me. Every time the Greatsword misses an attack, its regen is extremely slow. Also, he isn't using his uh, hilt in order to break my blade. Right there, I secure the victory and take it over him. Alright, here's another match against Sith. So, first off the bat, he starts with an unsafe approach and gets punished for it. Here, he eats another shot. Now, this is a mistake right here. He's backing off, and he should not be backing off when he's that close to me. Alright, so right now I'm feigning to go for his legs, and I know that I've conditioned him to go for uh, the legs throughout the last few matches. And I clean it up with a headshot like that. Alright, so right here I'm playing Jasisness while he's dual wielding green swords. Alright, what's important about this is that he is approaching very very slowly and carefully. I think that this is a very good way to approach Glaive, especially uh, when you want to catch them off guard with fast movement. Also to note is how he lowers his hitbox, uh, I mean his hurtbox, by lowering himself on the ground and crouching. Now he will use uh, some very very fast burst movement in order to get in my face. Do you see right there? He tries to break my glaive at all costs while he moves in. And you see with his swords, he is aiming for my shaft with some of his sword swings in order to stop me from fighting back. 
As you see there, he also swings around my glaive and finishes me off. Overall, very, very solid way to beat the glaive. Alright, so here I'm playing Artemis, a one-handed uh, axe player. So as you'll see in a moment, Artemis is extremely explosive. She is very, very aggressive and will try to get in your face. You can really contrast it with Jasisness, who is, plays a lot more patient. Alright, so first off, after one uh, blade trade, she rushes rushes right in. So what's really interesting is how she moves. So she'll duck around and lean in her play space in order to get behind me. It's really interesting because she can get behind me and land a very clean shot, dealing a lot of damage. As you see right there, that's another duck, and that is very, very scary for me, as she will stay behind me. And then she lands a clean bow blow by changing direction. I think that's a very, very interesting way to fight against Glaive, too. And it's especially good for those people who want to act more aggressively towards this weapon. Alright, so I want to talk about some ways I adapted to fighting against Artemis after a few games. So to start off the game right there, I landed a solid leg shot, which dealt 20 damage. It was a little bit close though, so she got the chance to uh, make her way in. Alright, right there, she makes her way in and goes for an attack. I see it uh, ahead of time, and I make a uh, sidestep to the far right or left in order to dodge her attack and cause her to whiff so that I can punish her with a counterattack. So she tries that tricky movement there again, but this time I'm able to track her and punish her for it. There we go. And then she tries to stick to me again, so I cannot reset neutral like I want to. So right here, you'll see me uh, try to call out another one of her uh, dodges uh, to the right or left. And I see her dodge, uh, but it ends up being a stalemate, as I'm not able to react in time, and uh, she breaks my blade. And right there, as she circles around, I'm able to punish her uh, by tracking her and sidestepping hard to the side. Alright, so that's just one way I want to highlight how you could... Uh, adapt someone and beat them over the course of a few games. Well, if you've made it this far, I just want to say thank you for watching. If you like the guide and want me to make more, then comment below. Till next time.